Hello everyone. Thank you for coming to our presentation titled NTT Docomo Challenge Looking Ahead the World of 5G and OpenStack. Today, we will talk about our efforts towards 5G as well as problems and countermeasures caused by the increase in scale and our technology expansion. First, I will introduce our company and us. Our company, NTT Docomo, is the largest telecom carrier in Japan with market share of over 40%. We, we are not only uh, developing mobile networks, but also developing and operating a cloud, uh, such as Docomo Cloud Platform. Uh, next, about speakers. Uh, I'm Hiroaki Inoue. I work as an engineer for Docomo's R&D department and as a consultant for our users. Uh, I will talk about 5G Open Cloud. The second speaker is Yuki Urano. He also works as an engineer and mainly manages the resources of our cloud. He will talk about resource efficiency. The last speaker is Hiromichi Ito. He is the CTO of Virtual Tech Japan and has been working as our partner from the beginning and is responsible for a system architecture. And this is today's agenda. Uh, first of all, uh, I'll talk about Docomo Cloud uh, Platform. Uh, Docomo Cloud Platform, uh, we call DCP, is a project uh, that started in 2015 as a private cloud and built with OpenStack and using various uh, open source software. Uh, even though it is a private cloud, uh, some resources are also on sale. By the way, uh, the similarity between our cloud DCP and Google's GCP uh, is merely a funny coincidence. Uh, when I talk about our targets, our target is different from uh, major public cloud operators and domestic public cloud operators. We are targeting users who demand low price even if few functions. And we are targeting, uh, so what we are offering is not a wonderful car like Benz or a BMW, but a cheap Japanese small car. Uh, next, I will talk about the scale of, of DCP. Originally, we built our cloud for our development team However, we started to provide DCP uh, as the infrastructure for Docomo's large-scale operation system in 2015. Uh, in, in 2017, uh, we started marketing the unused resources uh, of our internal system, and DCP has grown bigger. And now, uh, we have 11 regions uh, with over 200,000 VCPUs. Next year, we plan on consulting this expansion uh, and increasing the scale of DCP in the future. Uh, I'll leave out details of specific projects, uh, but we currently have large scale systems uh, that tens of thousands of people will use. Regarding DCP's expansion strategy, uh, we talked at Barcelona Summit. If you are interested, by all means, uh, please check the presentation. I said that uh, DCP has been steadily expanding, uh, but it didn't succeed uh, just by aiming at a layer different from AWS and Azure and so on. Uh, based on strategy I talked about in Barcelona, uh, we began consulting. The first thing we focus on is uh, why such low price crowds are rarely noticed, despite the fact that there are many users who want to use them. And the reason is they want to use it, but they can't use it. In short, there are not many engineers in Japan uh, who freely use OpenStack. So we created an OpenStack consulting team. 
and that can suggest the optimal system configuration according to user requirements. Uh, one consultant for each project. However, this alone was not enough to satisfy the user request. Even if we have the optimal configuration, uh, they, have to, they have to use OSS to build cheaply, but they lacked the skills to implement it. So we began offering a reference model. Uh, the reference model is the template for building a system with DCP, con uh, DCP recommended configuration uh, using heat. We template the basic of services such as web DBHA and OS middleware tuning and security measures uh, using OSS. So by reducing the design and development cost of the infrastructure, users can concentrate on software development. Through the consulting team and reference model, uh, we have acquired many users. And now we are doing technical standardization by using the know-how of our reference model and created a new template. Uh, it is Docomo original, and we will start to be offered uh, in next year. So if there is an opportunity, uh, we will share it. Furthermore, also devised operational costs. Uh, we are operating with TCO and that is smaller than AWS under the same conditions. Of course, we are considering further efficiency. Uh, for details, uh, resource management specialist Urano uh, will speak about this next. Uh, as I have said so far, we devised everything but the developing and uh, user support and operating. So we are producing uh, results. Uh, it can be said that uh, DCP has succeeded as a pro cloud project. Uh, that is the overview of DCP. So next, uh, Urano will talk about VM resource efficiency and cost reduction. So resource uh, management specialist Urano, uh, please talk your part. Hi, I'm Yuki Urano. I'm charge of manage, uh, resource management of DCP. Uh, now, i talk about uh, resource efficiency and cost reduction in DCP. Uh, before getting into business, uh, this is what uh, we talked at the previous summit in Barcelona. I briefly uh, talked about DCP expansion strategy. Uh, we have been expanding DCP with these DevOps. Uh, the strategy is raking uh, forest and trees uh, first, uh, we make a forest, a large project. Uh, the project, uh, pre uh, the project uh, prepares the entire OpenStack environment. Next, uh, we fill trees uh, with small and medium-sized projects. Uh, by utilizing the unused resources in the forest, uh, the tree can DCP without full price payment. Uh, by doing this, uh, we have been expanding DCP. Uh, now, I will talk about our effort to work towards resource efficiency and cost reduction after DCP migration of a large in-house system. Uh, this system corresponds to a forest in our strategy. Uh, resources uh, here refer to mainly CPU and memory. Uh, we consider four steps uh, to work towards resource efficiency and cost reduction. I briefly uh, describe each step. Uh, the first step is to prepare an OpenStack environment to ensure a stable system operation. Uh, the second step uh, is to investigate, uh, the, investigate the VM resource usage uh, running on the system and how many resources are being used. Uh, the third step uh, is to give feedback to our planning department. Uh, the fourth step and the final step uh, is to work towards resource efficiency and the cost reduction. Uh, in this presentation, I talk about the steps uh, one, two, three. Okay, uh, let's talk uh, about step one. 
uh, the target is our commercial large scale operation support system. Uh, this system used to be built with several thousand of physical servers and was in commercial operation. Uh, this system, uh, however, uh, since the physical server uh, became EOL, end of life, uh, they are migrated to DCP. And the system was in commercial and needed to run stably on OpenStack, uh, just like how it ran on physical servers. So uh, we decided to migrate from physical servers to DCP uh, without changing the number of resources. Uh, for example, uh, physical server uh, with 10 cores uh, migrate to a VM with 10 cores. Uh, next, I talk about the second step. Uh, since migrating of the system was su su successful and it is operating stably, uh, so we start to promote resource efficiency. Uh, I described that concretely. Uh, look at this diagram. Uh, this diagram shows the relationship between all servers and VM resources. Our uh, servers here refer to computer nodes. Uh, this other arrow uh, shows uh, uh, all, uh, all server resources, and this side arrow uh, shows uh, allocated flavor resources. Uh, these are reserved resources for trees or future use. We can easily uh, see these resources, for example, in Horizon. So uh, what about individual resources for VM, VMs? Uh, previously, uh, because each server uh, occupied its resources, uh, how many resources the server used was not a program. However, it is important to manage VM resources because the system is built on OpenStack and VMs can share resources. For example, if a VM with 10 cores uh, uses maximum 10%, uh, which correspond to only one core, uh, the remaining 9% correspond to nine unused cores. In other words, uh, these unused cores are redundant. By summing up uh, these redundant uh, resources of all VMs, uh, we can see how effective our resource efficiency is. Uh, so we visualize the VM resources and investigate how many the resources are being used. For the visualization of VM resource data, uh, we use Prometheus and Grafana. Uh, we use the OSS to handle resource data uh, more conveniently. Uh, Prometheus gathers and Grafana uh, displays and shapes the data. Uh, for each computer nodes, uh, we distribute exporter files that, VM, uh, that get VM resource and gathered resources the VMs on computer nodes. Uh, we consider the result of a particular region. I called it region A. Uh, this graph shows uh, region A CPU and memory allocation. The blue slice are allocated resource and the orange, orange slices are reserved resources. Uh, reserved resources are for trees or future use. Uh, we visualize the CPU and memory allocation resource for each VM. Uh, look at this light graph. Uh, this light graph shows uh, maximum CPU and memory usage per VM for a week. On the x-axis, uh, we have the CPU usage rate from 0 to 100%, and y-axis, uh, we have the memory usage from 0 to 100%. Uh, each dot is a VM. So let's analyze in detail. Uh, in this graph, uh, divide the CPU and memory usage by 50% and consider the four fields, uh, one, two, three, four. Uh, this uh, left, left line, uh, this upper uh, fields uh, is a group of uh, VMs uh, with high CPU and memory efficiency, but let's uh, 
Let's glance uh, spheres is a group of VMs with low CPU and memory efficiency. And this green uh, spheres is a group of VMs with high memory efficiency but low CPU efficiency. Uh, some of these includes underutilized VMs in abnormal situation. Uh, we found that even if a maximum CPU or memory is reached, 100% uh, of resources are not used. From this, uh, we found that there may be, in, may be a bias in the utilization rate. Uh, by visualizing, uh, visualizing VM resource, uh, we can see how many resources uh, are being used. Uh, then, uh, based on these results, uh, how effective is our resource exchange? Uh, this left graph shows region A CPU allocation, and this right graph shows region A CPU usage for in-use VMs. Uh, look at this yellow slice. Uh, by visualizing VM resource, uh, we can find many redundant resources. Uh, these resources are actually allocated on OpenStack and not available for new projects. So if we can take advantage of these resources, we won't have to build new hardware and we can reduce costs. Now, I talk about the third step. Uh, we share and feedback the result to our planning department and both sides start to work together on resource efficiency. Uh, we are considering uh, two specific measures. Uh, the first is the level of allocated Forever resources. Uh, however, depending on the application vendor, uh, there may be uh, cases uh, where extra deployment uh, costs are required, and the investment effort is sometimes low. The second uh, is setting of an uh, appropriate overcommit. Uh, based on the visualization results, uh, we think it is possible to set an appropriate overcommit rate. We verify resource efficiency in another environment and operate without programs. Uh, we are currently trying to make resources more efficient, so we'll look at the results at that time. Uh, finally, I will summarize our business DevOps challenge. Uh, our DCP is uh, more and, uh, expanding more and more. Uh, one of our goal is to reduce costs. Uh, we want to allocate resources to new projects without building new hardware. This can, result, this can reduce costs. Second, uh, our business DevOps enables centralized resource efficiency. Our business part, uh, development part, and operation part uh, can un understand how VM resources are being used, so we can work together to make our resources more efficient. Uh, finally, uh, OpenStack gives us the flexibility uh, to make our resources more efficient. Uh, OpenStack makes it easy to use custom flavors uh, depending on application requirements and can also set an appropriate overcommit. Uh, by utilizing these elements, uh, we will be able to work towards resource efficiency and reduce costs. That concludes my presentation. I uh, thank you. Uh, the following, uh, Inoue and Ito uh, talked about our challenges for the future. Then I'll, button, I'll pass the button to Inoue. Uh, he'll talk about 5G open cloud. Okay, uh, before talking about fi the 5G open cloud, uh, I will talk about mobile 5G to be launched by NTT Docomo in 2019. And do you know the features of 5G? Uh, there are three features in 5G. Uh, the first is uh, high speed and large capacity. Theoretically, uh, the peak rate exceeds 20 gigabps. So, and it enables high definition and large capacity delivery, like in uh, 4K streaming and VR. 
So the virtual world uh, becomes too real, and you can't come back. Uh, the second is low latency. The network delay is uh, one millisec or less, which exerts great effects for autonomous driving and remote medical health care. The last is a massive device connectivity. It is effective in the IoT field where countable devices are connected to the network and at the event site where many people gather. By 5G with these features, it is possible to accommodate ever-increasing packet traffic. And so, <coughs> sorry. Uh, we can communicate smoothly, uh, even in very high traffic density area. Uh, what is practically uh, expected is collaboration with various industries. And industries uh, that have never been born uh, may be born, and social issues uh, that couldn't be solved will be solved. The world will change drastically. Uh, however, Preparation is necessary for that. Uh, in other words, we need to try collaboration before 5G comes. And we have 5G test base station, and so we want our partners to use uh, them. But it is difficult for them to test by merely providing the 5G networks. Uh, in fact, they need platform uh, directly connected to 5G. So we created a new region directly connected to 5G for them. And that is, we made a 5G DCP region. And we are providing this to users uh, as a place to create 5G solutions. And this is a challenge for 5G, and it is also a response to increasing demand for mobile edge computing. Of course, uh, it is also connected to 4G, and it is easy to test the performance difference between 4G and 5G. The most, the most important technique is the L2 gateway, which connects 5G and OpenStack to high speed and low latency. L2 gateway is a system to connect a tenant network and an external network with high throughput and low latency. L2 Gateway uses use a hardware-based VXLAN gateway device and that works in conjunction with OpenStack. Hardware VXLAN Gateway is the ability to the gateway, a VLAN to or from a VXLAN tunnel interface at line rate. It is acting as a virtual tunnel endpoint, so VTAP. Now, uh, I have explained 5G and the core technology of DCP. Uh, I will talk about 5G Open Cloud. We started 5G Open Partner Program in February this year to connect, uh, promote 5G. And this program provides the space where companies and organizations exchange opinions on 5G technology and specification. And we opened Docomo 5G Open Labo as a 5G test room that partners can use. Currently, we have two sites. Participants of this program include more than 1,600 companies. It has become very popular, and the number of partners is increasing daily. The 5G DCP region is used in this program. <clears throat> and we provide clouds that partners can use together with 5G test base station. So we call it Docomo 5G Open Cloud. Towards the commercialization of 5G in Japan in 2019, and through this program, we can aiming to create many 5G solutions. Next, I will introduce the services provided by 5G Open Cloud. As DCP resources, we offer OpenStack resources such as Nova, Neutron, and GPU, so, and 5G, 4G mobile networks. 
partners who join the 5G open partner program can use them for free. In addition, we also offer Docomo core technologies like AI agent and image recognition engine for users to more easily develop solutions. Of course, this is also free for them. Then I introduced some solutions that we are actually testing. The first is remote video production. <laughs> in 4G, when broadcasting images edited in real time, it is necessary to go to the site with a repeater car with uh, equipped with editing machine. And this limits the location and timing. But in the world of 5G, you need only a camera in the site. Of course, uh, our company's smartphone is good. Uh, you can immediately send the video to broadcasting station, and you can edit and broadcast in real time. It realized thanks to 5G, which can communicate large capacity data uh, at high speed. And next, uh, this is a solution in which people in remote perform 3D modeling in a common VR space. In this space, creators bring, can bring in a tool such as a pen that they are familiar with. And you can do the design work uh, as usual. The content designed by each other are in, instantly reflected, and you can feel uh, as if you are working in the same room. Uh, of course, and uh, not only them, but also we are testing many other uh, solutions for the world of 5G. Uh, at the end of my part, uh, I talk about the prospects of 5G open cloud. As I have talked about so far, <coughs> in the world of 5G, it is essential that the network and the system platform are directly connected. So who can provide this platform? Uh, that is us, so NTT Docomo. And this is our mission towards the world of 5G. So we are planning such a schedule. First, we are currently extending mobile edge environments. And now we have two sites for 5G, and we open another 5G open level uh, during this year. Uh, of course, uh, next year we will add more. And Rugby World Cup will be held in Japan uh, in 2019, and we pre-release 5G DCP solutions there. And at the Tokyo 2020 Olympic and Paralympic Games with our solutions, <coughs> you will have exciting experience. So you have never experienced this uh, before. Uh, through this challenge, uh, we will lead the future world. Also, uh, since we will be able to uh, get topics that can be reflected in OpenStack, we will feedback through the community. So please expect, the, uh, expect this challenge. Uh, finally, uh, Ito talks the technical expansion plan of DCP. Uh, Ito, please talk your part. Hi. Uh, I want to talk about our next challenge. We continue to work hard for improving the performance, functionality, and stability of our OpenStack environment that can respond to requests our customers. Also, we will continue adding function and improving the performance of our OpenStack environment for the service that can respond to the request of the 5G era. As a result, we are currently conducting two study, research, and proof of concept. The representative ones are the following six. Container technology, GPU, FPGA, network, 
quality of service, and persistent memory. I will talk about each item. First, I would like to talk about container technology. The request from our customers that we would like to use container is not big yet. It was honestly unexpected. This is because our customers are mainly using in large-scale production environment that are not including include development and staging environment. That's the benefit of containerization is small. However, we are preparing support the container environment by determine, determine, determining that it will become necessary in the future. Now, for the customer, we are conducting small POC using Magnum and Rancher Kubernetes engine and we are developing the Ansible playbook for deploy Kubernetes to own customers' tenant. Also, for our next generation OpenStack environment construction and operation method, we are researching Airship to build OpenStack environment on Kubernetes. And for mobile edge computing environment, we plan to research the Aquiline project. Next, I will talk about GPU effort. We are currently providing bare metal type, which provides the entire cluster of GPU equip, 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 equip do node and pass-through type, which provides GPU with PCI pass-through for customers. With the bare metal type, the GPU equipped node it, itself is not under the control of OpenStack and only the tenant network is connected via, via uh, layer two gateway, L2 gateway. Currently, the most used type is the bare metal type. This is because the workload requested by the customer is occupied a compute resource of GPU equipped nodes. Also, GPU equipped, GPU equipped node is significantly different from the ordinary computer node, the request for cooling and power supply. It can be mixed in the same rack, but it was not efficient. So, and uh, we are offering the pass-through type only for limited period projects, such as the POC requested by customers. This is because the pass-through type can be provided speedily. Also, we are developing the B, B, B GPU type provide logically divided GPUs. The B GPU support feature was added in the Queen's release. We have been able to provide B GPU created using NVIDIA Grid to each instance and make it operate. We plan to offer optimal solution from these three types, uh, bare metal, pass-through, BGPU, that according to the scale and period. And the cyber will provide flexible acceleration resource management probably, but so uh, management of GP using cyber is currently under study. And uh, we currently doing POC for FPGA on bare metal type architecture. The reason for choosing bare metal architecture is same as GPU, uh, heat, uh, power, uh, and uh, uh, many user uh, occupied a fully used uh, one FPGA, uh, so does not uh, virtualizing, so we use bare metal. And the management of FPV using Cyborg is currently under study two. Next, I will explain our effort on network. Our base OpenStack deploy model is using layer three Ecolocos multipass fabric and BXRAN. And we are using NIC with BXRAN offload function from the beginning. For that reason, we have not received this satisfaction 
regarding network performance from the user at this time. Also, our customers connect smoothly to external systems by using layer 2 gateway. However, the number of core of the compute nodes and the memory size has increased continuous, continuously. For example, Intel's next generation Xeon has 48 core per socket. And uh, AMD's next generation Epic has 64 core per socket max. So we think that in order to maintain the network performance per instance uh, operating on the node, we need to improve the performance of the virtual switch and improve bandwidth between the nodes. Therefore, the following POC carried out. First, to maintain the network performance for each instance, we studied the hardware flow of the virtual switch using SmartNIC. Initially, the management method of SmartNIC's vendors varied considerability for each vendor, and there were several operation problems. Currently, the SmartNIC vendors are solving, solving the issues. Also, next-gen SmartNIC has advanced storage offload function. So we can create environment which almost all I.O. processing offload to hardware, like Amazon Nitro system. POC of this environment, uh, like uh, Nitro system, will be carried out in the future. Next, we are working to make layer 3 Ecolcos multipass fabric, which has been constructed using 10 gigabit Ethernet and 40 gigabit Ethernet. Up to now, with 25 gigabit Ethernet and 100 gigabit Ethernet in the future. In the staging environment, uh, 25 gigabit Ethernet between the node and leaf switch, and 100 gigabit Ethernet between the leaf switch and spine switch, we can be done without a problem already. As for IPv6, we are process, proceeding with the introduction work according to customers' request. Uh, we will not only offering IPv6 to the tenant network, but also on the so-called underlay side. We are doing the necessary investing to use IPv6 underlay side. Next, I will talk about the management of network devices such as switch and router. At the moment, we manage network device by combining CLI and Ansible. We are examining open daylight. Open daylight probably can expand the number of devices to manage and improve the manageability. We will also verify the open network automation platform as a technical element of mobile edge computing in the future. Next, I will talk about QoS, quality of service. Currently, we are provide QoS for instance storage IOPS performance and network throughput. We are conducting research on how we, how we will satisfy a re requirement of the strict latency requirement that required by the next 5G era. As for storage, we are investing the technology NVMe single root IO virtualization and uh, MDEV NVMe that provide can uh, that can uh, that provide can provide as a storage class memory with low latency maintained. This technology make possible to provide low latency storage class memory beyond NAND flash such as ready cross point. Lastly, I will explain persistent memory. We did a POC of non writable memory, NVDIMM, that using memory interface. In POC of NVDIMM, we got know-how such as behavior in case of failure, and the management method performed in server firmware level. I, and we plan to verify the environment in which customers can create instance with large amount of memory using, inter, in, using Intel Optane DC nearby future. Uh, also, 
I would like to provide an instance with persistent memory for applications that the cache does not become hot just after startup. Uh, that's it. Uh, any question? Okay. So our presentation, thank you for coming for our presentation. Thank you.